Abu Dhabi Executive Council approves 2.9 billion dirham housing loans for nationals. Ministry of Economy officials continue their tour to control food prices. And Pakistan marks Ramadan amidst flood recovery. This is Seven National News. In our top story, the Abu Dhabi Executive Council has approved 2.9 billion dirhams in housing loans for 1,496 nationals. This comes under the directives of President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan and the instructions of General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Supreme, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. The loans will be provided through the private loan authority in the capital and the approval is a part of a scheme under the Executive Council that accounts for a total of 7 billion dirhams for the allocation of housing loans for nationals. Representatives of the Investment Map Project, a recent Ministry of Economy initiative, held a briefing session for ambassadors and diplomats at the Emirates Palace yesterday evening. The aim of the Investment Map Project is to increase the competitiveness of the UAE through increased foreign investments in high-growth sectors. Emphasis has been laid on renewable energy and the manufacturing sector, with a focus on expanding the UAE's free zones. Foreign diplomats based in the UAE received updates from His Excellency Mohammed Selwa, the Director of Economic Policy at the Ministry of Economy. He outlined the project's different phases and steps involved in bilateral trade and mergers. According to officials, it's hoped that existing trade between various countries and the UAE will positively impact a higher GDP to almost 4% from the current 3.5%. India and UAE are uh, the mutually the uh, largest trading partners for each other at the moment. For the last two years, this has been the story. And uh, the foreign minister of UAE had been to India last uh, month. And uh, after discussions with our leaders, they have identified sectors where there can be more mutual investment. Uh, and uh, they are going to s s chart out plans in the coming months. Uh, there will be a joint commission meeting held in October or November. In terms of the sectors that are of importance to us are also of importance to our hosts. So energy, for example, including renewables, uh, infrastructure, uh, creative industries, education and training. These are all sectors at which the UK um, excels and which we think there are very clear opportunities for working uh, with the government of the UAE and with the private sector. We'll get more opportunities for the ambassadors, knowns about the behavior, knowns about the environment, business environment in the UAE, to it will add a value for the country of uh, the GBD too. As the Holy Month is a season of charity, organizers of the Oil Barons Ball are appealing to the community in a bid to provide the much needed financial support to cancer patients across the UAE. They aim to raise at least a million dirhams. Come November 11, this vacant ground will be elegantly decorated. This will be the venue of the Oil Barons Charity Ball once more as it comes home to Nadal Sheba. However, before the party begins, organizers are now hard at work to raise their target of a million dirhams. It's serving two objectives. One objective is it's a celebration of one individual's achievements, which is a lifetime achievement working in the industry, giving his career or her career to this industry. And that's the recognition of our oil baron. And we appoint an oil baron every year, and that's the focus of the event. But it's more than just that. It's more than a celebration of one person. What it is is a commitment towards raising money for charity. Uh, in, the last two, in the last three years that we've supported Friends of Cancer Patients here across the Middle East, we've raised for that charity 1.2 million dirhams, which is a huge offering. And it's a demonstration of how an industry as large and as successful uh, as the oil industry gives its commitment towards something which is such a needy cause. Friends of Cancer Patients is a Sharjah-based non-profit organization. It provides financial and psychological aid to patients and their families living in the UAE, regardless of their race, color or creed. According to them, events such as the Oil Baron's Charity Ball are critical for the survival of those afflicted, as well as their loved ones. 
We help uh, the patient in their treatment. We help them in their uh, uh, to have their investigation, their treatment, their operation. Um, also, if they need any equipment, special equipment, they need to keep at home, or if they need any prosthetic limbs that we provide also. Also, some patient uh, treatment is no longer available in the United Arab Emirates, especially the patients who are suffering from leukemias and lymphoma. Those patients will need a bone marrow transplant. And unfortunately, this procedure till now is not available in UAE. So we'll send those patients abroad. In addition, FOCP says there are still many challenges that need to be addressed, such as the lack of database for patients and the rising cost of certain treatments. Funding is a major issue, uh, and I think through organizations and fundraisers like Oil Baron Bowl, uh, I think that's a fantastic opportunity for people to actually participate in that bowl, feel good, have a great time, and, and actually uh, pa participate in a charitable uh, event. With barely three months to go before the celebration, event organizers and FOCP officials are appealing to the public. During this holy month of Ramadan, it is hoped that everyone will do their share and extend a helping hand. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. The Ministry of Economy continued to monitor food prices today. Dr. Hashem al Nuaymi, the director of the Customer Protection Department, inspected Dubai's fruit and vegetable market. The team comprised of inspectors from Dubai's Department of Economic Development and the municipality. Their findings revealed that retailers were charging different prices for the same food items with unrealistic markups. Officials also stated that unreasonable prices were unjustifiable and will result in retailers being fined. In addition, officials also stressed that customers should be aware of their rights. As of February this year, the Department of Economic Development launched the Be Right Know Your Consumer Rights campaign. The uh, last day I bring I, I begin to start for Abu Dhabi to visit uh, Abu Dhabi Cup. Today I, I, I visit also fruit and vegetable market in Dubai in Al Awir. Uh, inshallah, I have planning also to visit and cover all United Arab Emirates market. Inshallah, mm -hmm. you don't worry. Enter for Ramadan season to check at, uh, the market. Inshallah, what happened in the market? At, I ask the consumer also the market. Uh, let me to, to, to continue my planning for, for, for round in New Orleans, United Arabs. Dubai's Executive Council has approved the reduction of traffic fines during Ramadan. According to a local paper, executives from the traffic department stated that those with fines will benefit from the reduction, provided they settle all their fines in one go. The timing and percentage of reductions is, however, yet to be announced. Dubai Police Chief General Dahi Kalfan Tamim stated statistics show that a rise in accidents are common this time of year as a result of impatience when people rush home after work between 1 and 5 p.m. Figures show that there were 16 deaths, 17 severe injuries and 39 moderate injuries this time last year. Dubai police are currently urging people to stay at home during rush hour and for those on the road, police patrols will be handing out iftar kits along the Emirates and Sheikh Zayed Road. The Dubai Cares Initiative has announced the launch of a campaign to educate girls in developing countries as it's estimated that 42 million girls around the world do not go to school. The Dubai Cares Initiative was launched to improve children's access to pri primary education in developing countries. The Girls' Education Campaign 2011 will run throughout Ramadan to appeal to the UAE community and raise funds to support programmes to empower girls in developing countries. It's been reported that girls who have finished primary school are 40% less likely to die before the age of five. And looking to news abroad now, a year after deadly floods swept through the parts of Pakistan, thousands of Pakistani Muslims are struggling to rebuild their lives as Ramadan begins. Around 2,000 people were killed and 11 million left homeless in 2010 after floods struck. In all, 18 million more people were affected than in the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, Pakistan's 2005 earthquake, Hurricane Katrina in 2005, and the 2010 Haiti earthquake combined. The country suffered more than 10 billion US dollars in damage to infrastructure, irrigation systems, bridges, houses, and roads. 
A number of charity organisations, mostly Islamic charities, have chalked out plans to provide Ramadan assistance to flood victims all over Pakistan, which includes rations and cooked food for Sahar's pre-dawn meals and Iftar's after sunset meals. The riverboat Swallow, which sank to the bottom of the Moscow River after colliding with a barge, was brought to the surface with the help of a floating crane on Sunday. The private boat, carrying 16 people, sank after the collision at around 1am local time. Russian media quoted passengers as saying that the boat had been rented for a birthday celebration. The small vessel was badly damaged by the collision and the wreckage raised from the river showed a black hull covered with splintered wood and plastic. Emergency ministry officials said that one passenger was still considered missing. Early on Sunday, a spokesman for the Russian investigative committee, Vladimir Markin, had said that nine people had died as a result of the crash and that seven had been rescued with the help of the captain of the barge, including one man who swam to shore after the collision. And up next, we have the day's business news, so stay with us.